if I sent you? Hello. Hey, Souk. Leo's on. I didn't know Leo, Leo was on the show today. Leo. Oops, oops, oops. What's up, Suki? He's pulling up, pulling everything. How are you? I'm good, babe. While we're uh, before we start the show, we're loading everybody up. Did you see the tribute, the two-year Suki and Scott show tribute that Anita Anderson made? Anita Anderson, we love you. Can you imagine? Well, you know, we've I mean, always loved Anita Anderson, but I think we love her just a little bit more. I yeah. mean, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I got to give her a couple tips on putting a, a montage together, but she, <laughs> yeah, she did a, a beautiful job. She put it up on the Suki and Scott show group page, uh, which you and I have nothing to do with. The, the fans are in there putting stuff up. And Anita, because, you know, it's our two year anniversary. She made a nice little montage of uh, the Suki and Scott show. It was really Anita, nice. you are something else. I thank you so much for the yeah. bottom of our heart. Suki, it's uh, our last show before Valentine's Day. Uh, I have you got a very, big plans? I got, oh, I got plans, Sook. I got, you know me, I'm big on Valentine's Day. Um, we I want have, to run to Home Goods. That's what I want to do. My <laughs> husband's like, what do you want to do? Well, this weekend I want to run to Home Goods because that'll make me happy. We, uh, I have a very special Will Presty uh, flashback from Will did his Valentine's Day impersonations last year. I don't know if oh, you yeah. remember that. It was f unbelievable. Uh, Soup, we have an amazing show coming up. Actor Vernon Wells is here. Uh, you know him from Mad Max 2, Commando. Uh, 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 what was the other one I loved that I just... Weird Science with Weird Kelly Science LeBrock. With Kelly LeBrock, your fantasy yeah, yeah. girl. Oh, my God. How hot was Kelly LeBrock back in the day? And I, um, I was like, wow, my dog keeps biting me. He's just like I'm not paying attention <laughs> to him. He's biting my toes. <laughs> the little devil. The little it's all right. This, is, this isn't part of the show. It's all good, Sue. Um, and he's got a new movie, a new movie out called uh, No Name and Dynamite. It's like one of those fun spaghetti western movies. Love it. Uh, really pretty cool. Parlor Social coming up, Sook. Uh, this Get is a, to... a husband and wife team. Uh, basically, if Cab Calloway, Outcast, and Lauren Hill had a had a love child, you this get be it. Parlor Social. Uh, they are phenomenal. And then Marsha Collier is going to join us for a little bit. Give us some uh, last minute online Valentine's Day shopping tips, if you will. You mean you're uh, not getting Lara the mug that, you know. You know what? I'm taking Lara to, to where am I going next week, Sook? I oh, keep yeah, forgetting. Going to I'm going to Barcelona. God. I'm going to visit my kid. She's in Paris today, my daughter. Really living it up. Oh, it's uh, a city of love. That makes sense. Look at her. We're, we're going Barcelona next week. You're going to Puerto Rico. And uh, that's isn't that enough, Suki? Do I have to get flowers and the chocolate and all the yeah, BS? Yeah, no, that's enough. I think you did good. I think and, you did good. And, and who puts the Super Bowl the day before Valentine's Day? Because and who it's puts just, the Super Bowl on Sunday? Can we have a discussion uh, about yeah, that? Yeah, it really should be Why Saturday. Can it be Saturday? Can we start a petition with the NFL? Not, not only you got to do all the, the Valentine's shopping before Sunday, because once Monday hits, you got to have all the the lord's day they make it like super bowl sunday like god has know. spoken i know just throw it on a friggin saturday for now super on bowl saturday you? night yeah that's all that's all Suk, you ready to rock and roll we got an amazing show i'm ready to rock and roll let's do it scotty the Suki and scott show this is one of the funnest shows i've ever done hey there, when you're with me i'm smiling it's musical it's magical Suki and scott the seven of hearts this is a sexy show. Someone's getting some action. Now, these larger-than-life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you the Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. I answer you because I have respect for you guys, and it was a question respectfully put. The Suki and Scott Show is your one-stop destination for humor. You like De Niro and Kate Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment. Just Just girl. Girl. Wonderful. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Woo! And optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. Ultraviolet light, it gets in there and it just fights. It just fights the uh, gum flu. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's laugh together. I love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Uh... Nicely done. Suk, listen, we never really get political on this show, but one thing that's jumped out at me yesterday, because I've been thinking of Gaspacho all day long, 
uh, this young lady, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, instead of saying Gestapo, she said Gaspacho yesterday when talking about the, the secret police and comparing uh, some folks in the government. And Gaspacho wow. has just been trending all day long. And oh she my looks. God. And Gaspacho is so good, it makes you want to crave it now. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> She was talking, uh, who's the Speaker of the House? What's her name? I just forgot her name. Nancy Pelosi. She's talking about Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho instead of Gestapo. She was like, oh, is that Nancy and, Pelosi's house? And, she's got amazing gazpacho. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, so listen. That is pretty gonna, funny. And you know what? You're going to have fun. your share of gazpacho, though you might not when Spain. It's, 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 a summer, it's a summer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that a big thing over there in uh, gazpacho? Uh, in, Bar in Barcelona? In Barcelona, I'm at, no, I'm at the Barcelona. Barcelona. Uh, Suk, listen, Vernon Wells uh, is coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Vernon. He is uh, an actor. If his name doesn't jump right out at you, um, you have seen him in many, many of action film. There he is with Arnold. I mean, you know him. Uh, on the set of Commando. He is yes. a badass gentleman. So you don't mess with Vernon Wells because <laughs> he, will, he, he will kick your He's butt. He's a badass. Uh, he's gonna yeah. kick your you know what but anyway vernon's coming up we have parlor social an amazing uh amazing musical group marsha collier uh but first soup before we bring in uh vernon uh if you remember last year but it's our two-year anniversary of the show and we've had hundreds of guests celebrities and performers but but it's our last show before valentine's day and last valentine's day our guy will presti sent you and I just a, such a wonderful Valentine's message. Uh, instead of doing a, a Suki and Scott show flashback, I wanted to replay Will's message for Valentine's Day today. Here it is. We'll bring Vernon in after this. And here's our guy, Will, with a little, a little Valentine's Day. A little special. laughter. Hey, Suki and Scott, happy Valentine's Day. You know, since the beginning, you and your fans have shown me so much love that me and a few of my friends wanted to let you know how much we appreciate you. Here we go. Whoa, my love, my darling, I've hungered, I've hungered, well, I've hungered for your touch. A long, long, lonely time. Uh, and time uh, goes by. So slowly, and time can do so much. Are you, uh, <laughs> are you still mine? <laughs> I need your love. I need your love. Well, Godspeed your love to me. Lonely rivers flow to the sea, to the sea. That's how lonely rivers flow. No one knows more about rivers flow than me to the open arms then you close them and you grab them but no open arms of the sea you fired lonely river sigh wait for me wait for me i'll be coming home wait for me oh my love my darling i've hungered for yeah, I'm hungry for like, you know, like you touch, right? That's what we hunger for, right? You know, rocking and rolling and whatnot. A long, lonely time. And time, time goes by so slowly. And time can do so much. Are you still mine? Well, are you? I need your love. And I really, I really need your love. Godspeed your love. To me! Come on! Godspeed it to me! Give me your love! It's Valentine's Day! Come on! Like Zoink Scoob, it's Valentine's Day! Screw me, no! Oh boy! Valentine's Day! Gosh! Oh, yeah. Valentine's Day! <laughs> Alright! Giggity, giggity, giggity! Ladies, don't be cruel to your man tonight. Don't be cruel. Even if he's been a hound dog, don't be cruel tonight, baby. Well, Elvis, I don't think they're going to be cruel. I think tonight all the boys and the girls are going to get together and they're going to do jibbly jibbly's with the bibbly boobbly's. Hey, yo, Suki, it's me, Rocky. Happy Valentine's Day. And Scott, this is for you. Happy Valentine's Day. Love you guys. That's all, folks. Call it. That his talented kid. Ah, I swear Will. to God. His new name is Sibwill. Sibyl Will. 
He is uh, so very damn good. talented. So good. Suki, how dare you keep Vernon Wells waiting that long? He's a very busy man. How dare man. you? Uh, listen, Vernon you know Wells. Some of our favorite movies turned very old, 35 or something oh my, like that in 2020. Forget it. Science. Well, listen, I mean, how, how old is Commando, Mad Max, 30, Weird Science? Six, 37 Those, years old. Right? 37 all, years old. Yeah, all coming out in the, in the 80s, I think, right? Uh, so Vernon Wells is in all those movies. He's got a new one coming out called No Name and Dynamite. It's just like a spaghetti western, a funny movie. Uh, we're going to look at that. We're going to talk to him about it. We're going to talk about his career. Uh, here's a little reminder of who Vernon Wells is, ladies and gentlemen. You, you can run, but you can't hide. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh dear me. Vernon, was that was that you doing your own stun over the top there? No. Um, no, that was one of the few that uh, George would not let me do. He was a little bit afraid I might break my neck, which I probably would have. Um, I did most of the other stunts on that show. Oh man, what an iconic role! What an iconic movie that was, huh? And Mad Max and Mad Max Two. Yep, it was. Uh, it was actually quite scary. It was the first thing that I ever did. So you that know. was the first movie you were in, mm -hmm. here in the states, right? A blockbuster. Period. A oh, block I, that's it. First movie. Period. Yep. With Mel Gibson. With Mel Gibson. Uh, wow. What, what was Mel like back? You know, what was Mel like? So there's so many great Mel stories out there. Um, all I can say is Mel was wonderful. I mean, I, he knew damn well that I was like a, a scared little puppy, uh, the, the new boy on the block, and he did everything in his power to make sure that everything worked for me, which I truly, truly um, admire him for. But he also had his fun side. He had a name for me. He called me Barometer Bum. Um, <laughs> Barometer <why>? Bum? <laughs> Barometer Bum. Every time my ass went purple, they'd have to get us into somewhere where it was warm. Well, <laughs> well you were shooting in the cold? Where, where would you guys shoot uh, that? We shot it um, on the uh, New South Wales, uh, uh, South Australian border, but it was in a valley between two mountain ranges. So the wind would sort of come over the mountains and then along the valley. And uh, it was like being inside a refrigerator. It oh was my God. cold. <laughs> was, that, was that the Mad Max with Tina Turner too? No, that what? was the third one. Mine yeah, was yeah, the second was, okay. one. That was the second one. Wow. And and as as your first gig ever, uh, what was the the anxiety level when you're doing scenes with with a? And again, Mel Gibson was still very young in himself at the time. But what what was it? What was the anxiety level as your as your first part in a movie? Um, you know what? Once we got into it, there there was no anxiety. We just we went with it. I mean, George allowed me to develop that character and he who once said to me that I took 23 lines and turned it into a movie um <laughs> I just had so much fun but George Miller is is probably one of the the greatest living directors to me he just has a unique way about him for a week before we started we wrote a biography of our character from when he was born to when the the uh, movie started so basically by the time we got on on the set 
we knew exactly who we were and what we were doing and that was what we worked on which for me was was wonderful because it uh, allowed me so much uh, room to develop and to do what I did and I think you know I was just very fortunate that it all uh, turned out for the best it's great now the hair and the costumes are so iconic to Mad Max did they tell you like this is what we wanted you to do or were you like you know what I'm gonna go for it uh, no, actually, <clears throat> the uh, the mohawk I knew about from the first time I went up to Sydney to uh, do a fitting with George. Uh, they shaved my head because they needed my head to get used to the sun. Because apparently, <laughs> if you shave your head and go out in the sun, you get really badly sunburnt because your head is not used to being in in that kind of situation. Right. So. I they uh, shaved it about a month or so before we started uh, doing the show, and after that I was fine. My head didn't get uh, sunburned or anything. <laughs> but um, it's, you look, it's, you, look, you look like a badass there, Vernon. I'll tell you that you look yeah, like a costume, badass. The costume part of it. Um, the only input I had was that I asked that they put something around the neck of it because they're American uh, football pads. And when you, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, when you're throwing your arms around and doing what I was doing, you tend to cut the hell out of your neck. Oh, yeah, I could see that. So they put all the all the feathers and stuff uh, became part of it. And I had to fight for about three weeks to get the flap on the back of it because uh, the uh, young lady who was our uh, wardrobe mistress was determined that I wasn't because it was her view that, I guess her view was the back of my ass, to be blunt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, listen, so the movie, and I, I, we were going to touch on Commando with Arnold and, and some of the other things, but the movie uh, that came out, um, uh, or actually it's coming out on the 21st of February, yep. is called No Name and Dynamite. Uh, and this thing is, uh, it, this looks just like one of those fun Western uh, spaghetti type Western movies and Vernon is it this it kind of seems like a a different part for you because we're used to seeing you as as these these lunatic guys of the future uh, or or an Arnold uh, you know uh, guy nemesis uh, nemesis thank you Sue for that word um, is is this playing it in a Western was that a big departure for you as far as what you what you're so used to doing uh, not really. Um, I I enjoyed it. Um, westerns are one of my thing. I love westerns um, and sci-fi. And I mean, when you look at it logically, the westerns and sci science fiction and all that, they're all the same thing, except the genre changes. But, you know, Mad Max uh, Road Warrior was actually a western uh, based on uh, if you look at one of the scenes I do when I come into town there where we have the big confrontation, they're all in the, the um, where they are and we're all outside, that's high noon. Just the way oh. I stand and the way I walk down. It's all high noon. So Westerns and science fiction, it's all very much the same genre. So uh, Westerns I really enjoy because there's something about it that – allows you to just drift off into this wonderful, wonderful place. Yeah. And uh, I was just very fortunate. I've got two Westerns to do this year, would you believe? Suddenly everybody's like, oh, yeah, we'll put Vernon. <laughs> um, it's, you're the, it's like, you're the, the new Western king. Oh, uh, man, it's, it goes around in circles. You know, suddenly it'll be I'll be the villain and everybody hires me to be the villain. Then the villain. someone will go, you know what? Let's have him as a good guy. We'll have him as this this 12 year old's grandfather that'd be really cool <laughs> right right sure. and suddenly every... sorry I, I just want to know is that a boomerang behind you i'm looking at it your, is uh, thing. it's on the the wall behind me well <laughs> as an australian is that a rite of passage you, you gotta have to, that boomerang you, you gotta have the boomerang, to boomerang well actually you know some people have guns in their houses i have boomerangs I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll knock the shit out of you come in my house with a boomerang <laughs> uh i'll tell you what let's take a look at the trailer uh, for No Name and Dynamite. Uh, it's coming out on the 21st. Video on demand. Take a look. We'll talk more on the other side. We're bounty hunters. That's what we do. What you gonna do, No Name? We're what you call business associates.
We need an identifiable corpse. We're not getting paid on this job. Yep. Oh, my Lord. They're chasing me. They want to kill me. Attack me. I would pay you handsomely for your services. What's your name? John Wilkes Booth. Oh, my God, he killed the president. He's worth $50,000, Barnard. Payout is due upon delivery of that bounty. I'm sorry to say, you no longer have the advantage. How'd you come about going after John in the first place? I guess I'm kind of like y'all in that. It's on my fair share of bounty hunting. Now! Where's the gold? We ain't after the gold, just the bounty. What they look like? Gringo y un chino. Excuse me, gentlemen. I sell candles. I sell Roman candles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I love? How they, they, you know, they're bringing in John Wilkes Booth and everybody's looking for that, you know, that, that bounty on his head. Uh, and you play Black Jack Bennett. Uh, yeah. are, you, are you a bounty hunter in the movie? No, I'm actually... Um more of, of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of have the, the bar and I'm uh, like, you would call me the, the local head of the uh, mafia if you wanted okay. to go in that direction. <laughs> and I run afoul of them. And I, I actually loved it because the reason I took it on when we did it was they said, oh, you, you die with a, uh, <clears throat> a bottle through your, your eye. And I went, excuse me? And I said, yeah, um, dynamite's going to slam a bottle through your eye and then shoot you. And I went, I'll do it. Yeah, I love, you have a $20,000 bounty on your head, I right? I know. Not, not as I much have. as John Wilkes. Nope, but I have one of those uh, posters because I thought, you know, hell, one day it'll come in handy. Oh, that's great. That's great. It, so, but it was no, it was a lot of fun. And the funny part about it is they, they say that um, it's a relative or something is only 10 steps away from you at all times and you don't know it. And while I was working, the young man that, that plays uh, Dynamite, we were just chatting about something. My wife is um, American Japanese and we were chatting about and something came up. And he said, oh, my God, my grandfather was one of the people that helped design the uh, church out where your parents are. And your parents went to that. Uh, her parents went to that church and wow. he helped build it. And it was like, huh? And my <laughs> father and my father's father were dentists. And your uh, your wife's parents went to them for their dental work. Oh, my God. Wow. That's so fun. That's rich, right? Like, rich thing. Yeah. It's like, what? the hell <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's kind of interesting when uh you know you, you just don't know you know you you've uh you turn around a corner and say hello to somebody it could be a long lost cousin true true so we're all fun. separate we're, we're all Which, for sure. it scares me immensely by i love it well what's um, in it Bernie, ahead, the other Sue. thing is, like, you come out, like, swinging. Like, you know, you start with Commando. Then you've got, I mean, we've got, I mean, sorry, we start out with Mad Max. Then we've got Commando. You've got you've got Weird Science. Like, did you ever think to yourself, I have worked with some of the greats in this industry. And this knife fight, there's a story <laughs> behind that, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. It was actually... <laughs> Well, I read. I read that you, 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 you know, you kind of scared. Uh, Who Arnold screwed up, there. Vernon? Who screwed up with the blades? Uh, and, no, no, and, it, and it, sliced it him wasn't a little bit. actually. It wasn't actually that knife fight. It was earlier in the film where Arnold is chained to the table, and I put the knife to his throat. When I arrived, um, there's a whole long backstory which I seriously don't know who, where, or why, but. I was not cast in the film when it originally began production. And uh, uh, Joel Silver, who was doing um, Weird Science, uh, producing um, that, he took me to the director and sort of, um, and he went, no, 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 I got somebody else in mind, you know, so, <laughs> which really didn't worry me. I was too young to, you know, I was a newbie, so I don't give a shit. Um, 
So I went back uh, to Australia and they called me and got me to come over and do the role after they'd been filming. And I was very tired. There was 14 hour flight. I had uh, had very little sleep. They uh, shaved me, cut my hair, put me in a costume that really didn't fit me um, and had me wander out and do my job. And the first scene that we shot was that one where Arnold's tied to the table. Oh, tied to the table, right? And, yeah. And I, I actually work a little differently. I, I kind of want to see what's what's going on, where the cameras are lighting, you know, the people I'm working with and all this. So Arnie was a little bit worried and he sort of said to Joel, you know, loud enough for me to hear, which is very dangerous. He sort of said to Joel, he said, uh, I don't know what we do with him. He's a <laughs> pussy. And I went, a pussy. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> This cat has claws, Arnie. And when we actually did the scene, when he said uh, action, I sort of leapt on Arnie with this knife. Fortunately, it wasn't real. And had it right up into his throat and did the scene. And then when um, the, the director called cut, um, Joel walked over to Arnie and said, so do we need to recast or what? And apparently Arnie just looked up at him and went, never give him a real <laughs> knife. <laughs> That's very that was, funny. That was the end of it. We became very, very good friends. He had a, a in an interview, he had a little thing about me. He said, he is the cuddliest, nice human being until you go action. Then he <laughs> turned into a bloody <laughs> raving move. God. I was going to say, so you guys stayed friendly over the years, huh? Yep. Yeah, we see each other occasionally. Uh, I live down in Pacific Palisades and he lives up on the top of the, as I keep telling him, I live down by the ocean. He lives up on the top of the mountain. Top of the um, mountain. And we run into each other at the shopping center and that occasionally and say hi. So funny. Imagine that. You guys no, are going. I don't to, imagine uh, that. Like little, running at the shop, right? Yeah, yeah. Was, and shop, right? Um, Vernon, talk about real quick, because Weird Science, you know, that's one of those movies Classic. that you just, you, when you see it on, you got to hang and watch it for a watch little bit. Um, you know, it's a rite of passage for kids now. I don't yeah. Know, yeah. know that, Vernon. It's just, it's well, such a great movie. And even Kelly in LeBrock was. Yeah, if you were going to make a woman like they did, Kelly LeBrock would have been it at the time. Um, she was definitely the most beautiful woman yeah. in the world. And you you were part of, you you kind of played your Mad Max character in like this whole fantasy scene, right? Yeah, it was it was kind of interesting because when they first approached uh, me and and uh, it was Joel Silver, uh, when they first approached me, I said no because I just didn't want to do the Mad Max thing again. Right. Um, <laughs> and it was just this whole big thing. And eventually, uh, you know, I got talked into doing it and I came over and did it. And the funny thing is, if you look at that film, there are so many young actors in that yeah. film that went on to become major, major Superstars. stars. Yeah. Robert, Robert Downey. Downey. Anthony, Robert Michael, Downey. Anthony Michael Hall. Yep. And, yep. you know, you've just had these wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, I had such a good time doing that film with all these crazy kids. And the thing that got me was I came from Australia. That was before I did Commando. So I came over here uh, straight from Australia to do that film. And I was not used to the amount of money that was spent on a film. You know, to me, you made a film with $25 and some bailing wire and spit and good luck. <laughs> And to, to walk into a, a set and find that they had a, a, a two-story house that could be moved into pieces so that yeah. you could shoot inside. I was I was uncontrollable. And then they had uh, this <laughs> um, huge rocket that was like a real one um, that went through the roof. I, I just couldn't handle it. I was like out of my mind. It was just so... <laughs> different to what I was actually used to or and could also imagine. back then John Hughes was it was he was yes. the guy right I mean he, he was, was he was actually the reason I finally said yes to the film was that I read up on it and I saw all the things that John Hughes had done and I thought this man would be just so much fun to work with and uh, he was he was just an amazing amazing human being and I loved working with him and all the the cast I mean they're all lunatics yeah no and, I mean, uh, who, who, um, he who? was. I think he was the first director all of us, like regular yeah, yeah. kids, knew. I mean, everyone would be like, "Oh, it's a John Hughes film. We got to go mm -hmm. watch it," you know. And um, who who played the brother Chetty passed away recently. John Paxton. John yeah, Paxton. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, uh, Paco. Paxton. No. Yeah. What I, was uh, his name? Oh, uh, now you got me. 
He um, was from the Titanic. He played the brother yep. Chet. Um, he passed oh, away recently. Hold on. What's his name, Sook? I uh, I have his face. I can't remember is it, but he was great in that movie too, as the you know the 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 douchebag brother yep. who was just right, and she turns him she turns him into a pile of crap in the kitchen. <laughs> But he was just, he was such a kind, kind gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? He, he, he really was. Bill Paxton. No, Bill, right. Paxton. Bill Paxton. Not you. I said John, but Bill Paxton. Yeah. Bill, Bill yeah. Paxton. Yeah, and he passed away recently. But what a what a great role for him. And it was just uh, just a terrific movie. Really was. was. Yeah. And as I said, it had all these young kids in it that all became um, famous. The, the, the fun story for me from that was when I first came over, they put me up in the Black Tower, as they call it, up at Universal on the hill. Yeah. There's that big hotel. And that's where they put me. And uh, which I thought was wonderful because there's a hill and I could walk down the hill every day and then walk up every night for exercise. So that to me was the greatest thing. So the, the first day on set, I walk out the door and there's a guy standing there um, with this limo. And he said, uh, Mr. Wells. And I said, yes. He said, I'm your driver, sir. And I went, excuse me. He said, I'm your, I'm your driver. And I went, for well, what? He said, to drive you down to the set. And I kind of looked past him and the set's like down there. And I went, it's at the bottom of the hill. And he went, I, I, yes, sir. And I went, I want to walk. And he said, oh, I can't let you do that, sir. And I went, I'm sorry. And it turned great. out that his job, he didn't have a choice. He had to take me down. So we came to an up. agreement. I would, he would drive down the hill. I would walk down the hill beside the limo. When we got to the gates to Universal, I would climb into the limo. He'd drive through the gates, around the corner to the set. I would climb out and go into the set. We did that for the two weeks I was here <laughs> filming. Uh, that's great. They really pamper you nice when you're on those movie sets, right, Vernon? Really? Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> but it was just so, oh, uh, well, it was great. interesting and fun. It was great. Well, listen, the name of this movie is No Name and Dynamite. It's coming out on uh, on demand on uh, February 22nd. Yep. So uh, not too far. What's today? Today's the uh, 10th, 11th. So 20 days from now, 10 days from now. 10 days from now. 10 days, days from days, now, actually. 11 days. And I'm good. I'm, I wasn't good at math, Vernon, either. Um, <laughs> No name. And <laughs> I can't even remember. I'm going to Spain next week. Um, Errol Sack is the uh, is the writer and director, and it's just a fantastic movie. And um, again, it's you've got to see it. It's you got to see it. Of wonderful, wonderful stuff. That's what I love. I also you had a little bit up there of a, a film I did. Um, Trouble is my business, which was a film noir, black and white. You had a little piece in your intro to. Oh, me. in the intro, yeah, 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 and. I love things like that. I had so much fun doing that film because it was like film noir. And this was the same kind of thing because there was, there's just so much of the old West in it. And when you when you see it, it, it just reminds you of every movie you've seen. Every West, right. And that's, that, I think, is wonderful. So, you know, you got to watch it. It's going to be so much and, fun. And uh, Don Collier is in it too, right? He's mm -hmm. Isn't he in there? He used to be in it. Wasn't he one of the, the guys from Gunsmoke back in the day? Back in the day, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's old, right. Old, wonderful people, uh, I think, show their faces in there. I love it. It's no name and dynamite. You got to check it out. It comes out on the 21st and, uh, Vernon, VOD, listen, right? yeah. Video on demand and, uh, real easy, right in your house on your TV. Vernon, absolute pleasure. My friend, an honor to, to meet you. And, uh, always one of my favorite Bennett, Bennett, I'm going to kill you, Bennett. <laughs> Just loved it. Loved no, it. The, the, the one is, you know, I don't need the gun, John. <laughs> right. I don't need no stinking gun. I'm going to kill you now! <laughs> and wait, one, one more trivia question. The, the guy he in, in the in, he hangs over by the neck and the, uh, over the cliff was the yep. same guy from the Warriors. Yep. Uh, Warriors, come, come out, out and play. What was, what was his name again? Oh, I can't God. remember. You're trying to kill me, aren't you? It was... <laughs> But he, I just saw him in something else recently. He, uh, he's a wonderful actor, actually. Yeah, he's great, great. But I, I remember Arnold holds him by the neck, and he go, and he just lets him go off the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I you said it. you weren't gonna kill me. I lied. I lied. I lied. <laughs> I love it, Vernon. Thank you so much, my friend. Good luck with the movie, and uh, of course, continued success. But thank you, my friend. And pleasure uh, to have you. you. Bye, Vernon. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Ah, uh, you too, Vernon. Spread thank the love. You, 
Thank you. And anytime you want me, just give me a buzz. Uh, and listen, also, uh, next we will movie, be you come on back. Your property okay. because we see the boomerang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. I love Damn it. it. Bert, take take care, my man. Pleasure. Thank you, guys. All right, bud. Take Hi, care. Hi, Vernon. Uh, what a great guy, Suk. Such a great guy. He was one of those guys. You saw him in those movies as a kid, right? He, and he was just always, didn't, uh, you know, was always that guy. You just, I didn't know his name, and I said, as soon as I saw his face, I said, you know what, Vernon Wells. I mean, like, listen, he's he worked with Mel. He worked with Arnold. I mean, he yeah. worked with you know some of the biggest directors in the eighties and the nineties. Come on, really great, Suk. All right, listen, we roll along our pre Valentine's Day show, uh, Suk. I was telling you about we need some music, social. some love. Parlor Social. Uh, Parlor Social. They are described, Suki, as if Cab Calloway, uh, Outcast, and Lauren Hill had a love child. Um, you would get Parlor Social. Um, not that we're saying that they have had a, a love child, those three, but if, <laughs> if they did, um, husband and wife team, Desi Deloro, Ricky, I hope I'm saying Pajot. I hope I'm saying that correctly. They'll, they'll uh, correct me if I'm not. Uh, they have a new single out called She Believes, uh, which just came out on, on the 28th. They've they're got good this, looking. Oh, they, they, dude, this is, they, you know what I love about good these two? Looking, they're, they're, they're like this. They're like talented. a sexy, sexy, steamy couple who are doing their music together. And they are, they're really, really good. I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, Parlor Social. Uh, they're going to perform. We'll talk to them. Um, take a look, and then we'll bring them in on the other side. Why? I'm going to do three. We're not ragtime. We are neo ragtime. We are speakeasy soul. It's a new sound, a new flavor. I thought we were going to be a sweet one. And y'all forget it was the same thing. What's up, guys? You guys, even in the afternoon, sexy and fat, with no <laughs> lights all lit up like that. Uh, you know, we live in LA, so we gotta come correct. <laughs> you do, you do, you do, you do it. correct. Uh, so it's Good. it's Des Desi and and Rick. Is, now is it pronounced Ricky or because you got that little thing Ricky. going in the middle, Rick? Yeah, yeah, Ricky. All right. Keep the keyboard, but you, you pronounce my player. last name right, Pajo. Pajo and, and Desi, you guys are, uh, of course, married and doing your thing. And, and I got to say, I, I, I've watched so many videos of you guys today. And it's just, it's it's one, a lot of times when you, you know, you have to watch videos of people, you're like, all right, come on, come on, let's move it. It was real. I was sitting here, I'm boogieing at my seat. I'm dancing. You got uh -huh. watching. Uh, nice. It's really, really good stuff. And you guys are Thank just you phenomenal. So much. And, Thank and you're really, you. you're just, ri you're rising up on the chart. And you, I'll tell you what, you guys put on some kind of show you're really really amazing we do. yeah we put in a lot of work into it um you know it's it's a full concept i mean it's the it's the costumes it's the music it's the language the harlem renaissance language but we make it we make it new we make it contemporary we call so, it yeah. retro futurism retro so <laughs> we're like that. Retro in the old and the new so it's 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 a no it's an inspired by a classic sound and we're bringing it into to, today Mm -hmm. You look so. well. You're definitely the Bonnie and Clyde of it for sure. Yeah, look at you uh, guys. You. Hot 100 unsigned live artist and band in the USA. That must have been very good. Why do you guys? I mean, live music is something that either people can do or they can't do, right? I mean, we, right. And we've all seen artists. Sometimes you're like, ooh, e ah, you know, you're in Madison Square Garden, and if you like cringe a little bit, you're like, ooh, that that was that was a rough one. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> What, I, what I'm curious about is why do you guys want to still remain unsigned? Is that part of part of something? I mean, don't you want to get it out to a larger audience? This vibe, the scene, the feel? I mean, I mean, definitely we love to get it out to a larger audience, um, you know, but we live in a day and age where 
first of all, it's it's great to have these platforms where we can put out our music without without having to wait for a big record deal or anything like that. So shoot, put right. it out on, yeah, doing. like look at TikTok <laughs> now. I mean it's crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And I mean, the my other kids thing are is telling that me that songs have to be on TikTok before they become something. I'm like, really? No. At this yeah. point now, yeah, that's yeah. what it's become. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the the crazy thing is that we live in such a, you know, I find that the industry is not as willing to take chances because we live in such a different time of the music age. They're just playing it safe because they don't even know. People want to keep their jobs. <laughs> so <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's amazing. And you guys have a new uh you got a new single out called She Believes, which came out we right do. at the end of January. Uh and yeah. you also have this She Believes challenge, which you guys have, are, are doing on TikTok, which we're gonna show in a second. Um, do you guys you want to you wanna sing something and then we'll and then we'll come back on the other side sure. and talk some more? Sure, sure, we could do the single. Let's do she believes. You could do she believes. Do oh great. Okay, we will. Yeah, let's do it. You got, got put in the headphones. She believed she could be what she wanted and set out to be. With drive and motivation comes a possibility. She takes on all the pressures with calmness and dignity. She can move the highest mountain and make it seem so effortlessly. This queen's a scholar, she is a boss. She fights for freedom at any cost. She is the leader, she is the president, a peacekeeping force to really represent. She is the mother, everyone's hero. She'll do whatever to protect love and guide. Yes, she's been defeated, but never broken because of nothing she can handle. Cause she, she believes that it's true. That anything is possible, yeah, yeah. She, that is true. You have scars from the battles you fought through to get you this far. Your trials and tribulations shaped you into who you are. She takes on all the pressures with kindness and dignity. She can move the highest mountain and make it seem so effortlessly. This queen's a scholar, she is a mess, fighting for freedom at any cost. She is a leader, she is a president, a peacekeeping force to really represent. She is a student, she is a teacher, she's a rebel cause a true achiever. She fights for justice, committed activists, because there's nothing she can handle. She, she believes that it's true, yeah. That anything is possible, yeah, yeah. She believes that it's true. Hey, come on, come on. Everything is gonna turn out well. Well, everything is gonna turn out well. You bet. Clap your hands at home. Come well, on. Well, everything is gonna turn out so well. So clap. You know so it. Clap. Everything is gonna turn out well. Well, everything is gonna turn out well. Bet. Everything is gonna turn out well. Hey, hey, hey. Well, she believes, she believes that it's true, that anything is possible, yeah, yeah. She believes that it's true, I said she can, she will do anything she wants to. She can, she will achieve anything she wants to. She can, she will achieve anything she wants to. Oh, she, she believes. Woo! Very nice. Very nice. I've heard it on TikTok. I know it. Well, yeah, well, they Yay. have they have the She Believes Challenge, Sook. I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to yes. show you what that is right now and show you how to do it because you got to start <laughs> doing it. Take a look. Watch this on TikTok. She's 
intensity, refuse determination, independent and free. She is a fighter, she is a warrior, she can overcome any obstacle. She is a dreamer, she is a champion, she will never give up forever. Back down. She is a mother, everyone's hero. She'll do whatever to protect her and guide her. She's been the thief. I, I I love you too. I love. Uh, thank uh, you. This is. I gotta start doing. Do I gotta do that, Sue. I gotta show off my moves. You gotta oh, show come my moves. Come on now. We want to see the moves. Come the on. on their head. I gotta sure. get in there. <laughs> she believes. She believes. So listen. Uh, I mean, yeah. tell us about your love story. I mean, obviously, the love of music brought you together, but the love story that you know kind of continues to create new music together. Yes, we. Um, well, uh, music obviously brought us together. We're both originally from Montreal, Canada. And uh, we're not Canada. Just recently... <laughs> yes, big up Canada. <laughs> uh, and so I had just moved back from Florida and I was hearing about this fantastic new young cat on the scene, keyboard what? player, hot new keyboard player. I and love it. I was it. like, okay, I all love right. it. Yeah. And so, I mean, the connection between us, that's, that's, you know, he's my soulmate, my nice. best friend, my, it Aww. never gets tired and it never gets old with him. And it's just like the fact that we get along and make music together and make our living together and perform together. We do everything together. It's just mm -hmm. really amazing. It's, 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 it truly is like for those, those people that don't believe in true love, it's out there for everybody. You just got to find the one for you. The yeah. right one for you. And, so. and you guys, you know, I was reading how you had a song called Jumpin', uh, was it Jumpin' Jivin'? Jumpin' Jivin'. Yes. That was, that, that was in the, it was all used during the Final Four, the college uh, basketball Final mm -hmm. Four. And he has a Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's unbelievable. And 2013. Our, one of our so. singles. Yep. And actually the next song that we are going to play, let me hear you say Hep Hep, was also featured on Selling Sunset. Oh, oh really? On Netflix. on Netflix. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think episode six of uh, season two, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, season two, episode six. So, yeah, we're hoping She Believes because of the message is really powerful of She it Believes. It is empowering. So we're trying to get out there. Hello, Nike. <laughs> Hello, Nike. Get the word out. Get, the, out there. get those endorsement <laughs> deals. Yeah. Um, well, listen, b before, before you do that song, uh, I caught you guys doing uh, a little uh, Bobby Brown. It's my prerogative. Yeah. I'm oh, yeah. the talking all. But you had a new, different spin on it, right? It was a make yeah. it your own type of deal. Sue, take a look at this little my prerogative. Watch. <laughs> permission make my <laughs> own decision. come on scott come on it's my prerogative <laughs> scott, scott's already got tickets for the new, new edition reunion show going on because they're all together oh yeah yes, uh, yes you guys yes, are yes, great yes. man you, you put on a yeah a we decided show, to really. flip it and give y'all a little bit of bluesy yep backyard <laughs> Down blues, south, blues, dirty, backyard. i love it dirty love blues it. Yes, thank uh, you. It's great. It's great. So what want... is the what was the inspiration? Because you know, you know, we, we looked at your bio, we we kind of explained it. Is it when you guys were growing up, is that what you heard in your homes? And that's what inspired you to continue that music and that legacy? Mm -hmm. It's so funny because my mom had been telling me for years, like, you know, I know you're doing this music and you're like born in a hip hop generation. Yep. And, but she said, you know, my parents were avid vinyl collectors um and so we used to listen to cab calloway duke ellington yeah. fletcher henderson they still have these really like you know classic, classic. Yeah. um albums 
uh, vinyl on vinyl. So I grew up with all this stuff. I grew up with Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughn, oh, and all this oh, stuff. And yeah. then mix in like the Whitney Houston's and Lauren Hills and you know, Outcast and Tribe Called Quest. So it was a big blend. And so one day it just came about that Ricky and I were sitting in our apartment. He was playing something, and I was like, play that like ragtime it. And then that was the beginning of it. And we just started creating. It just flowed naturally. But it's because of all our influences and yep. the influences in both of our house. We have such a unique blend of music that we grew up with and all kinds of music. So we were yeah. blessed, blessed to have like a, a very musical family and mm -hmm. uh, upbringing of listening to all this incredible music. So fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, you mm -hmm. guys want to do the uh, the hep hep song? Sure. I thought you never asked. <laughs> here we go. Featured on Selling Sunset right Ooh. here. Yeah. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. Well, all right now. And if you feel good, let me hear you. Hey, hey. And if it's all good, let me hear you. Hey, hey. And if you feel good, let me hear you say. Hey, hey. And if it's all good, let me hear you. Hey, hey. I'ma set it off in this place to see. They come from every corner just to party with me. In your head like a symphony. Out on the floor, it's a jamboree. Turn up, turn up excessively. Drop the bell down, come and talk to me. Oh, don't put it on repeat. Come on now, try to be. What it say? What's your name? Don't even tell me it's all the same. Just let us be me and you. Out in the crowd, you do what we're with do. So tonight I'm gonna be your man. I'll make you sweat fall down like this is tomorrow. That's my name. I know you'd like it, king. You need to feel good, let me hear ya. You need to talk good, let me hear ya. You need to feel real good. Hey, hey. And if it feels good, let me hear you say. Hey, hey. And if it's all Come good, on. let me hear you. Hey, hey. And if it feels good, let me hear you. Hey, hey. All good, let me hear you say. Hey, hey. Hands up, we're gonna fall in line. Drink this wine till we clock that time. We all need to let it go. So grab your bag and sleep it at the door. Come on now, it's a jubilee. Count it up, baby. One, two, three. Left, right, up and down. Somebody scream out in the crowd. Hey. What it does, say what's your name? Don't even tell me it's all the same. Just the next me and me and you. I'm in the country doing what we do. So tonight I'm gonna be your man. I'll make you sweat fall down like me. Just see the love road, that's my name. I know you're glad you came. And if it feel good, let me hear you. Hey, hey. And if it's all Come good, on. let me hear you. Hey, hey. And if it feel really good. Hey, hey. If it feels good, let me hear ya. <laughs> oh, good, let me hear you say, Ricky. I smell smoke. Is this place on fire? Nah, they just vibing and they having a good time. All these friends that love peace and all that jazz. You know how they get when we doing it live. Everybody let your inhibitions go. Said you could cut a rug or be cool like the wind Where the blows. Dukes are dapper and the duchess is a beautiful. Said it's the only place to be in the jamboree. Hey. You are witnessing ragtime reborn. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hep Cat Horn. Come on. Uh huh. Well. Uh. Uh. Da, 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 da. Well, all right then. Hey! And if it feel good, let me hear you. And if it's all good, let me hear you. And if it feel really good, then I'm in a good girl. Oh, girl! Hey! And if it been a bit of good, it feels real good. So if it feels good, let me hear you. Oh, good, let me hear you. Oh, good, baby. Let me hear you say, if it feels good, let me hear you. Oh, good, let me hear you. And if it feels good, let me hear you say, and if it's all good, let me hear you say, happy, happy. Wow. Listen, would you guys, would you guys mind if I came like on tour and I was just the hey, hep, can we hep, hang out with you guys? I just want to be the hep, hep guy in the come back. On. I just want to go hep, hep. Come go. on, we Let's guarantee go. you a good time. Come on, Let's come go. through, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are obviously touring and out there. Uh, where where are you guys? Are you going to be in the New York area anytime soon? 
Well, right now, because of the pandemic, it's kind of been, uh, we kind of been waiting Local. for a while. We put out yeah. the single. It had been a while since we put out, dropped the single. So, but we, but we do perform in New York regularly, at least once a year. Yeah. So we'll be, uh, we'll be announcing some dates, but we are going to be in San Francisco. At the Boom Boom Room. At the Boom Boom Room on March Love it. 4th. That's right. March 4th. February, the boom, uh, boom, boom. Friday, March nice. 4th. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So it's, boom, it's boom, starting. Boom. It's starting. We're starting. Yeah, it definitely is. We got. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. listen, so. all these. Uh, all, I mean, I was walking around today in, in New York and uh, they were saying uh, you don't even have to wear a mask to go inside now. <laughs> It was a little unnerving, but loose. I did it. I know, loose I know. Up. I was going to say the exact same thing. It's a little kind of, you know, I think we're all you know, suffering PTSD. from PTSD. We all right have PTSD. Now, we're like, trying to believe crazy. again. I'm like, can we, can we believe in this? Unreal. Yeah. Guys, know, listen, I know. You, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Where can people Thank find you, so you on social media? At Parla Social, um, throughout all the uh, platforms. Everything. On Facebook, Parla Social Music. Yeah. And uh, also parlorsocial.com. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Music, um, Amazon TikTok. Music, TikTok. And uh, please, if anybody wants to do the challenge, please. It's a very uplifting song. It, it, we wrote the song to inspire, motivate, and empower girls and women globally. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. So come bring it. We'd love to see. Uh, and every dollar from the um, videos that you post, we'll put up to $500 to the girls. For every, Inc. For every video you post. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Donate so, a dollar up to $500 to Girls Inc. Yeah. Beautiful. Dot org. That's great. So it's for a good cause and we're, you know, celebrating. Organization. Yeah. Remember the hashtag She Believes Challenge. She Believes she Challenge. Believes challenge. And guys, listen, after this airs on all our different platforms, um, don't blame us if somebody wants to sign you, okay? It's not our fault. Yes, come on now. <laughs> Coming on tour with us. <laughs> Coming on tour with us. Come Guys, on. listen, congrats on all the success. We'd love to have you back again anytime, please. You're, you're amazing. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. We appreciate Bye, it. Guys. Thank you for having us. Let me hit Take care, hip. guys. Happy hip, Valentine's. Hip, 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 uh, listen, Souk, uh, Parlor Social, amazing. Uh, real quick, I want to bring uh, Marsha Collier in. There she is, hey, Marsha. Hey, Marsha. We'll bring Philly Happy Kid in. Happy uh, Valentine's Day, you guys. Hey, what a great Valentine's Day. Day. Marsha, you Yo, Good to see you. Phil's Same back. Here. We're all here. Marsha, listen, you, uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, right? You, the Super Bowl's on Sunday, so so we men can't go out on Sunday and get stuff for Valentine's so Day. Screwed. We got to do it right. We got to do it between now and Saturday. So you got to give us give us some ideas on, on what we can get that'll make these ladies happy so we, we won't get in trouble. Make these okay, ladies happy. Quick. Yeah, make these ladies happy, for God's sakes. Real quick, just a tip for next year. Be sure your loved ones have a wish list on Amazon. This uh -huh. is a list when you favorite items it goes into, and all year you will see what they can add to the list. You can easily find it by going to your lists on Amazon, and it's there by person. They have to invite you to the list, and you can go at any time, find a gift, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. You'll know what they want. Hmm. So that's the number one thing. That is a good tip. And if you're like me, and my husband told me, oh, I really want these, this outfit is really great. And I'd never heard of the website and I ordered it. And well, it's uh, not here yet. <laughs> I ordered it. So it was great. It was a jogging suit with a little American flag on the pants. It was great. So I'm going to cut out a picture of my order and I'm going to put it in a big box with a lot of tissue paper right. and wrap it up. <laughs> And in this little piece of paper is your gift, but it's not here yet. So there's a supply chain issue, which is why I'm telling you maybe not to rely online. At online. The oh, boy. So you're better but off going, going into a store. Yeah. It, <laughs> but here's a couple of things you can do it at home, which is really important for your lady. You take a look at Suki. You, you know this. If you have a scent that you like. Oh, yeah. A, easy. a cologne that you like. Men, just take a look. If there's one there, go to the store and see if they have a body lotion, a powder, or some sort of cream or roll-on that goes with that scent. 
Oh, yeah, that's a good you addition. You know it's something they'll use, right? And it makes yep. it look like you really care. Unreal. <laughs> Philly, <laughs> Philly kid, are you already you set for Valentine's Day with your wife after all these years? Uh, I am not. I am not. I, I'm one. I'm one of those guys who procrastinates. You know, Marsha's talking a lot about list. You know, my wife also keeps a list, and I'm not going to tell you the name of it, but it starts with S. And and I, I normally I'm on that list, but I'm I, I'm going I'm going to take care of it. I promise. So you better get out well, there. Today, I've got so. a great idea for you. What's that? Take your wife. This is best done in a convertible in SoCal, but I'm sure it'll work wherever <laughs> in you Oklahoma. are. In <laughs> Oklahoma. Get in a car and drive to the side road next to an airport. Hmm, Bring okay. a picnic with you, a little bottle Ooh. of wine, a couple of glasses, and sit on the hood of the car, or better yet, lay on the back of the car and watch the planes come in. That oh, okay. is so much fun. Yeah. And it's something you normally don't do. Phil, she might really like that if she enjoys planes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Su Suki, Suki, you know my wife. Tell Marsha what would happen to me if I drove to the airport and we didn't get on a plane. What uh, would happen she to would, me? She would rip his head off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I have one for you, Scott. Go ahead. Do you have a Google Photos or an Apple Photos account? Sure, sure. Okay, search for specific places, things that you've done. Print out the pictures. Mm -hmm. Make a book. Uh, it can be 10, 20 would be nice. Right. Color pictures. Write a little comment on each page on how you felt on that day. Put them together and give that to her as a oh, gift. That's nice. Wow. All right. That's that nice. Might, that's that really might, that's not fair. I love that. That would work. It's a that's gift beautiful. from the heart, and technology can help you pull out photos that maybe you won't remember right, that right. you ever took, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, if you have a significant place, like if you're in New York, you love Rockefeller Center, the Empire State Building, just go there at night or if you can and make it special and then just go out for dessert because it's hell to go to a restaurant on Valentine's <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Husband, just don't. Don't even do it. <laughs> No. And these days, all the restaurants have great takeout. I know Lowry's and Frank, uh, Frank Musso and Frank's here. They all have deals where you can take out a Valentine's Day dinner. You can go online, do that, and then bring it home and then set it up on the table like yeah, you yeah. planned this all along. Crazy. So it's great. a lot of anxiety, Marsha, with these holidays. You know, wise know. birthdays, Valentine's Day. It's very, it's a, I get very, I get a lot of anxiety about trying to get the right thing. But this is why the wish list is so important. You know, on Amazon, you can always also put items from other websites, like for your wife, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, you know, that the things that she really like. Also, mm -hmm. go into the bathroom. If she uses some really expensive hair stuff, mm -hmm. trust me, this doesn't come Ooh, cheap. Blowout city. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, if she uses like expensive shampoos and stuff, check the prices, go online and find a store that carries it near you. There may be an Ulta Beauty. Oh, Ulta. yeah. I love Ulta. I was just there. Right? And they may have just what you want. And believe me, when your shampoo costs $35 a bottle, you're going to be real happy when you get a bottle of it. <laughs> and conditioner to match. I love so, it. So, you know, look for the things that are going to make her happy. And ladies, for the gentlemen, there's a website, and it's too late to use it now, but for next year, themanlyman.com. They make flowers yeah. out of beef jerky. Really? Literally. It's themanlyman.com, <laughs> and it's beef jerky roses. Philly, now I know what I'm, get, I'm getting up of Phil for his birthday. <laughs> right, and they have a bouquet of bacon, cook, cooked bacon. Wow. Um, they have great, yeah, manlyman.com. I got to look at that. For any man gift, but, you know, you can't do it two years in a row. Okay. Yeah. They even make little <laughs> conversation hearts with little messages on them that are made out of beef jerky. Which so great. You can also buy a cheap box of uh, candy. This is for men. And take the candy out and put in all different beef jerkies. And things like that. So you've given him in his heart, 
Yeah, he'll say, "Ay, chocolate, I got chocolate. A keto-friendly, a keto-friendly <laughs> uh, thing. Keto-friendly, because, yeah, the, my husband's keto. So yeah. just put a bunch of keto-friendly stacks in one of these big hearts and keep it from year to year. And gentlemen, if you want to give your wife chocolate, please don't go to CVS or Dwayne <laughs> Lee. Please. We know what chocolate comes from there. You know. yeah. Uh, make, yeah. Make the trip to a Godiva. Make the trip to a Mrs. C's. No matter where you live, there's a chocolatier that makes good chocolate. You mean even though there's a box of Godiva at CVS, Marsha, we shouldn't take care of that one? Well, okay. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. You know, I, had an ex, I had an ex-husband who got me flowers one year for Valentine's Day who had a little bit of a drinking problem. And he showed up <laughs> with an arrangement from a baby shower because that was all that was left. At the oh, course. my God. That's so funny. I love it. That's why I we're exes. Yeah. Uh, Marsha, listen, I, I don't want to be <laughs> remiss in saying that you, of course, of the uh, Everything for Dummies series, um, the the all the stuff for eBay, the stuff that we always love, the Facebook and Twitter love for it. seniors and um, the eBay and if for dummies. Uh, has a spouse that has Android smartphone, I can pretty much guarantee you that this book will have tips. I mean, I've already caught somebody online teaching paid classes that are based on this book. Really? Oh my There's gosh. nothing I can do about it either. I'm totally screwed. Right. But <laughs> Wow. This book has a lot of information. The reviews are good. What people say, it's not a baby basic book, but it will teach you like my terms. I don't use the fancy tech terms. I'll use terms like gizmo and what's it and hamburger menu because it looks <laughs> like a hamburger. You know, so I use terms that we all understand and I don't talk down to people and I'm your friend and my email address is in the book. So if you ever need to contact me for help, it's I'm right here. There. Beautiful. Marsha, nice. you are, you're the best. Listen, hopefully you have a great Valentine's Day. Uh, how can, can, where, what's your what's your site, Marsha, that people can go well, on? Well, I'm at Marsha Collier on Twitter. Okay. Uh, I have a podcast. Comes out every Monday called Computer and Technology Radio. It's been on for almost 10 years. We've been wow. doing it. And it's tech news of the week that you probably don't hear. You know, like Mark Cuban opened a pharmacy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, for the uh, inexpensive pills. Yeah, right, wow. right. And and I go into that in last week's show. And we just give you tech news of the week, and it's every week on Monday, Computer and Technology Radio. It's all over spot, just like, just like you, but it's on all the audio channels. Audio Love channels, it. beautiful. And nice. uh, uh, MarshaCollier.com. You can go there and check out stuff if you need to contact me there's a contact form but messaging me on uh, twitter is much better i'm there every day beautiful marcia marcia yeah. thank you so too. much we have to do fashion we have to do some mother's we should day do yeah. some fashion stuff we should do some money stuff i too. i got another dress with google lens Zubi. you did not <laughs> i did. and this was kate middleton kate middleton was wearing a dress to die for and I'm going, how am I going to find this? So I tried Google <laughs> in. I found a seamstress on Etsy who copies Kate Middleton's dresses. So how do you use Google Lens though? So do you download the app or what is it's it? It's built into all Androids. And Not when iPhones, you, Android. you open your camera and there's a Google Lens place to hit it. It takes a picture, you center onto the item that you want to find. Yeah. Then you tap search and it finds it for you. I mean, I, amazing? That's the way I've been shopping during the pandemic. I have been finding everything. I love you. I need that. Well, this Why doesn't Apple create anything like that? that God damn it. The whole thing. But this was the hot ticket last year. It's right. a single jumpsuit. It's a onesie like wearing pajamas. It is a onesie. <laughs> it's a onesie for adults. I love it. Marsha, have Bye, a great Marcia. Valentine's. <laughs> Hey, Marcia, love your music. Marcia, um, Bengals, Bengals or Rams, Marcia? Who do you like? Rams, and you guys know. are going to die when you see the weather here in LA. Oh, uh, I've already said. Oh, all my radio buddies are doing their radio row in LA, and everybody's got their shirts off under the sun. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch it poolside. How's that? Yeah, oh, there LA. you go. Yeah. Unreal. Marsha, thank you so much. Have a great Valentine's Day. Bye. We'll talk Marcia. soon. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Marsha. Marsha's you. so good. Bye-bye. So uh, good.
She's great. She, but Marsha's like perfect morning show material, right, Sue? Oh, my God. She's got the she's perfect, perfect mo- our show material. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. But, well, I, I always consider us a morning show, even though oh. we're on the <laughs> afternoon at night. But she's just perfect for that. But uh, listen, guys, uh, great. Happy what Valentine's a, Day, what guys. What eclectic show today. Great shows. One show next week, Wednesday night, 730. Uh, that's our only show next week. Um, Sue. Uh, I'll talk to you, but have a I'll nice Valentine's later. Day. And, I got to uh, see you, Suki. I'll you. see you guys later. Bye. Bye, Philly. Bye, Bye. Bye. Philly kid? Yes, sir. What a what an eclectic, if I may use that word, show today. Yes. Uh, yes. Man, do you remember You remember Vernon Wells from those movies? Oh, of Steve course. <laughs> yeah, one of, my, one of my favorite bad guys, man. Right? It's Because yeah. when I when I saw Vernon Wells was coming on and I see actor, so, you know, I did his name, I didn't know the name, but when I looked him up, I was like, of course I love right. Vernon Yeah, Wells. I've been watching that guy, you know, <laughs> kill people and rip people apart for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, crazy. <laughs> He's always always a great bad guy, man. But um, listen, here's here's what I think. I think you... Over the course of the next three days, and this is for our viewers, Phil. This is strictly just uh, me ordering you up to give to our viewers. <laughs> right. Um, I think maybe like a three-song concert from you for Valentine's Day. Over, yeah. you know, you, you you got plenty of time. Can you do it? You think you got time? Maybe like one song a day you put in a can over the weekend, and then and then on Monday I'll put it all together. And a little little uh, Philly Phil Paz Valentine's. Yeah, that should be easy, right? A couple love yeah. songs, anything you want, of course. But I think you know our viewers would love it. Um, sure. And did you see the did you see the the montage that Anita Anderson uh, made? I have um, not seen it, dude. You got to go to this. Well, I I reposted it on the Suki and Scott page. Oh, you did. She took it upon herself, Anita Anderson, one of our super fans. She right. runs the she runs a Suki and Scott show group page. Yeah. Uh, and she made a two year anniversary montage of the show. Nice. And it's really good. And uh, you got to You got to go check it out, man. It's, yeah, it's I will I'll go check it out. It's really good. good. Nice. You want to uh, you want to do a little a little singing now, a little preview action, a little Valentine's preview. Yeah. First, I'm going to do a we got a couple of uh, birthdays today. And. uh this is this guy is an actor, and you're gonna have to go way back for this one. Way back, he, he's, All right. uh, he's no he he actually he passed away in uh, 1980. Uh, he uh, he's an actor, singer, Broadway guy. Just you know, you name it. He did it back in the day. Okay. But uh, anyway, the clue is the first clue is going to be, you know, he sang all kinds of songs, but this was the one that I grew up as a little kid knowing him first. Go ahead. And it goes kind of like this. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corn cob pipe and a button nose and two eyes that are made of coal. And his catchphrase was ha cha cha. Oh, I was going to say, is that not Burl Ives? Nope. No, kind, not Burl, kind, not Burl. Kind, same time frame. You're same right, time right? Hot cha cha. Ha cha cha! <laughs> oh, I know, I know this. I know and the guy. They called him. His nickname was the Schnoz. Oh, oh, uh, yes, yes. A uh, ha cha. Um, oh, not uh, Frost. Jimmy Durante. There you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> that was good, Scott. That wasn't that wasn't one of those gimmies I usually give you. Yeah, no, that was good. <laughs> that I couldn't. As soon as you said ha cha cha, like I I know what that's from. <laughs> Okay, and our our second birthday girl is uh, she sang this song. She sang a ton of songs back in the day, but this one you might remember. And this this is not the uh, song that was later done by the Fugees or the Fugees or however you say their name. Fugees, Fugees. It goes a little <laughs> something like this: Strumming my pain with his fingers, singing my life with his words. Killing me softly with his song, killing me softly with his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly 
with his song. Name that singer. Uh, that would be not Lauren Hill of the Fugees. That would be uh, Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack. But I, love I, Roberta. I, I do like the I did like the Fugees version with a like strum in my pain with this. And the guy goes one time. One time. <laughs> Hitting me nothing is worth. Two this times. Time. Hitting me softly with his song. Hitting also, me softly. She also sang with, uh, uh, oh, what was the, Donny Hathaway? The closer I get to you, the more you make me see by giving me all you got. Your love has captured me. Yeah, that was a good one. What's the uh, what's the um, the the chorus on that one, Phil? Ooh, sweeter My and sweeter and glow, right? Clothes, and heaven's there for those who fool the tricks of time. With the hearts of love, they find true love in a special way. Yeah. God, that song reminds me of being a kid in like junior high school. Yeah, she uh right yeah. sweeter and sweeter and glows. You know, and it's hard to believe she she is 85 years young. That's Roberta Flack, wow. Yes, yes. Everything's flying by. Sure is. Donnie but, Hathaway. Uh, yeah. Man, where is he? The is did he pass away, Donnie Hathaway? Donnie Hathaway. Oh no! The closer I get to you, I feel like he had another uh, another song. Maybe let's see, Donnie. Where is the love you said you give to me? That's it. Where is the love? Where is the love? Where is the love? <laughs> Uh, Phil, I get you know what? I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big uh, I'm not a big drinker. I drink socially with my you know my wife and her friends and stuff. And like every like mo- a month or so, right? My wife and her friends that she goes away to St. Martin with all the time, they'll come over with with their husbands or whatever, and we'll just get some food, drink a little bit, and we have the big you know we blast out the big Wi-Fi speaker. And just put on like all those songs, and like yeah. everybody just gets s- totally s- stupid singing those tunes, and it's just <laughs> it's so it's so much fun, you know. Yeah, those are the best times, man. Oh my god, it's just if you, all you need is good music and some alcohol, and you got and you're good to go. Yeah, right. And you play like the old rap tunes, and you know, and everybody just you know all the stuff that was big on the radio, and everybody just doing dancing in the kitchen. <laughs> It's like that, because that's the way it is. And you just, you know, all that stuff, the Run DMC and the Sugar Hill Gangs, and it's just yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, it's uh, good times, good times. Yeah, yeah. How about a little uh, How about a little George Strait? George Strait, light it up. Philly, can you do George Strait, and I'll find us one of our duets to, uh, to send us home. Go ahead. Nice. Oh, how you sparkle. And oh, how you shine, the flush on your cheeks is more than the wine. And he must do something that I didn't do, whatever he's doing. It looks good on you, you look so good in love you want him it's easy to see you look so good in love i wish you still wanted me he must have stolen some stars from the sky and gave them to you to wear in your eyes. I had my chances, 
but I set you free. And now I wonder why I couldn't see you look so good in love. You want him, it's easy to see. You look so good in love. I wish you still wanted me. Do, 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 do. You muted. I got things up. I can't unmute myself. <laughs> uh, what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. Uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up, Philly kid. Yipper. And it's all about love, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we, we did this song for New Year. Um, little Don't Pull Your Love Out on Me, Baby. And um, like I said, if you're in the mood for a little Valentine's concert, totally up to you. I could always take stuff that we have and put it together, make a nice yeah. little montage, even from your page. But yeah. um, we'll rock and roll. And yeah, see what uh, I can do. It's all good, my man. I will. Uh, I'll talk to you later on. Yeah. So next week is just one show Wednesday at seven thirty. Okay. Uh, we got two great guests on the show, and uh, we'll just finish it up. And then I think we're off for like a week because I'm I, I'm going to be away. Suki going to be away. Um, I can give you the controls to the uh, to the stream yard if you want to just come on and sing. <laughs> <laughs> possibly <laughs> just come on and sing i'll give you the uh i'll give you the passcode um but other than that let's finish it off with a little uh who are the guys who sing this again what's the crazy name don't pull your love uh ha em Emerson, uh hamilton Ray frank and reynolds hamilton so, frank so, and reynolds. hamilton frank and reynolds all right here we go everybody we love you thank you so much for hanging out with us we'll replay this again tonight everybody will get together uh, happy Valentine's Day. Maybe just maybe, maybe we pop up on Monday night, Philly kid, and just sing it live. You never maybe. know. You, you never, never know. know. Here's a little uh, don't pull your love. We love you guys. Oh, yeah, Philly kid. 2022. Don't pull your love out on me now, baby. Come on, everybody. Don't pull your love out on me, baby. If you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down. Cry for a hundred years Don't pull your love out on me, honey I take my heart, my soul, my money But don't leave me drowning in my tears You say you're gonna leave Gonna take that big white bird Gonna fly right out of here Without a single word Don't you know you'll break my heart when I watch you close that door Cause I know I won't see you anymore Don't do it, man! Don't pull your love out on me, baby If you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down And cry for a hundred years Don't pull your love out on me, honey I take my heart, my soul, my money But don't leave me drowning in my tears haven't I been good to you? What about that brand new ring? Doesn't that mean love to you? Doesn't that mean anything? If I threw away my pride And I got down on my knees Would you make me beg you pretty please? Don't pull your love out on me, baby If you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down Cry for a hundred years Don't pull your love out on me, honey I take my heart, my soul, my money But don't leave me drowning in my tears There's so much I want to do I've got love enough for two But I'll never use a girl if I don't have you Don't pull your love out on me, baby if you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down Cry for a hundred years Don't pour your love out on me, honey I take my heart, my soul, my money But don't leave me drowning in my tears Don't pour your love out on me
on me, baby. If you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down, cry for a hundred years. Don't pull your love out on me, baby. If you do, then I think that maybe I'll just lay me down, cry for a hundred.